Okay, so uh, my name is uh, Milin Tambe, and uh, the presentation I'm about to give is jointly with uh, Fei Fang, my former PhD student who's uh, sitting over there. She'll talk in more detail a little bit later, but this is trying to provide a higher level view of our research. And so uh, topics I want to cover uh, in my uh, short amount of time is the predecessor conference C4, uh, I'll talk a little bit about AI for wildlife uh, protection and then protecting fisheries and forests. So let me start with uh, the C4 conference. This was uh, held in 2014 and 15. Uh, it was a conference uh, on conservation, computation, and criminology. Several of you who are here uh, were there at the conferences. Uh, Nicole Sintov, uh, Fei Fang, Thay Nguyen, um, Boan, uh, Chris Kikinwell. Uh, several of you helped organize this conference. In reality, the conference started out at C3, then we realized that uh, we could make it a C4, and if it was uh, going to be held in 2016, uh, we realized, given Nicole's interest in cognition, we really wanted to make it a C5. But uh, it was better to merge it uh, to, so that we have a more interdisciplinary collaboration. I'm so really happy to see uh, everybody here and I see uh, several of our colleagues, Will Moreto and, and Aushul and so forth from the criminology side of the house. So thank you all. So let me uh, talk about the area of wildlife protection. And so that's the main theme that I'll focus on throughout this uh, presentation. And so we all know the terrible stats of uh, rhino poaching and elephant poaching and so forth. So to make it more practical, I wanted to talk about my visit to uh, Murchison Falls National Park in Uganda. Uh, some of you have been there, I know, and it's a wonderful place with uh, wonderful animals, but uh, there's threats to the wildlife. These are the kinds of snares that poachers use. In fact, thousands of these snares in uh, 2014 alone. So the question then becomes, what can AI do to help protect wildlife? So there are several things, but there's one particular system that we've been building at USC called Pause Protection Assistant for Wildlife Security. And that's the theme of this talk that I'll focus on. So the basic challenge here is that we have massive forest areas, thousands of square miles to protect, but limited security resources. And so the question is, how do you efficiently patrol or protect these forests? So these are uh, two areas where these challenges are faced. We were at the Global Tiger Conference in Sundarbans in Bangladesh. Um, and Nicole and Thine also visited with, uh, with WWF in Indonesia for patrolling. And so the pause is designed to try to help by two things. First, exploiting past poaching data to make predictions about future poaching attacks, and then generating patrols that would avoid predictability and ensure deterrence. Now, in doing so, we build on some past work on using AI for urban security, for public safety and security. And for the benefit of those who may not be aware of that, some of you are, uh, I wanted to sort of quickly give you an overview of some of that work. So these, these are decision aids that have been based on game theory. We started this work in 2007 with work at the LA International Airport. Given the number of roads and terminals, not enough officers, so where and when do you do patrols and checkpoints? And so by doing randomized uh, patrols based on game theory, sometimes you find people who are carrying a large number of weapons into the airport. So the basis for generating these randomized checkpoints uh, is game theory. Some of you know, of course, uh, but this is a, uh, a rock, paper, and scissors game. By placing particular rewards and penalties into the game, we can solve this and give advice to player A to play rock, paper, and scissors with the frequency of one third each, of course. The game at the airport is more complex. There's more complex set of actions, more complex rewards and penalties, but it's a game that we can solve to similarly generate probabilities with which uh, police officers need to be present at different terminals. And this was the Arbor system we uh, developed at the LAX airport that went on uh, next developing assignment of air marshals to flights on a randomized basis, taking into account the risks of different flights. Furthermore, with the Coast Guard generating patrols in different ports like Los Angeles, New York, and Boston. So if you've been on the Staten Island Ferry and seen these uh, patrols, uh, these are our algorithms, in fact, uh, 
part of Faye's PhD thesis. And so this radically changed how the Coast Guard used to do these patrols. And on and on it goes. In fact, there's a large number of these applications that have been deployed using game theory as a way of generating optimized security allocations. This has led to significant improvements. So for example, in controlled experiments we conducted on LA Metro trains using game theory versus not, we can see 60% improvement in the number of ticketless travelers captured. At the checkpoints at LAX, the red bar, red arrow shows uh, numbers of captures before armor to after. You can see a five-fold improvement. And so, this is these are just two snapshots, but there's many more uh, results. In fact, um, there's a startup company uh, that we have where the key thing is that it's normal to have a game theory product, as opposed to uh, make. So, which I which I find is uh, fascinating that people can just talk about you know, we're building a game and it all just works. So the question is how can we build, how can we take what we've learned from there and use it for protecting wildlife? So we divide up the forest area into grid squares. Each grid square is a target. And what we are trying to generate now are patrols for each grid square, the frequency with which we will patrol each of these grid squares. When patrols are executed and poachers attack targets, we can learn from the crime data to predict future attacks. So at first, uh, so the, essentially what we are doing here is using these uh, predictions then to generate more effective patrols. So it's a combination of game theory plus uh, poacher behavior prediction. To generate these poacher behavior predictions, uh, we've done a number of human subject experiments. Ben Ford and uh, Devaron Carr will talk about some of these uh, games that have been played. And see, these are on Amazon Mechanical Turk. And then the same we, were, uh, we tried with uh, rangers in Indonesia. So this is work uh, Nicole uh, did with the WWF visiting Indonesia. And so this is one way of generating human subject data. But another way, and, and what we learned from there is people are not acting with perfect rationality, but instead they are looking at, so they aren't maximizing expected utility by finding that one great target with the maximum expected utility. But the attacks are spread out throughout the park. And one way we can try to capture what they're doing is what we've been calling this uh, subjective utility control response model. It looks at each of the features of the target and gives them different weights, and these weights are learned from past attack data. And this then, in a control response formulation, provides us some predictions of where poachers are striking. So this, we find, works well in these games that we've played. But now the question is, how would it work um, with real data? So with the help from Wildlife Conservation Society. We've got these uh, data from 12 years of patrols. And in applying this SUQR model, then we are trying to predict how likely is there an attack on a grid square. And so we can try to predict it based on range of patrol frequency, animal density, and other features. One big thing, though, is that you only find attacks where you patrol. And so therefore, uh, it becomes a two-layered model where we also need to look at the detection probability. And this is really a very, very challenging problem. I mean, we, as we know, we talk about big data and so forth, but this is a problem really of small data. Uh, there's just not enough data. And this is a real challenge in trying to figure out how to, how to predict these poacher attacks. So it's a major, major uh, research uh, challenge. We've made some progress. Uh, compared to some simple other alternatives, we can show that we do better in terms of prediction accuracy, but there's a whole lot more that we need to do. So based on these uh, initial game theoretic models and poacher behavior predictions, first set of trials were conducted with our uh, collaborator Andrew Lemieux in Uganda, and then with the collaborators from Panthera in Malaysia. But in order to see things firsthand, we uh, patrolled in Malaysia ourselves. So you can see that's the day uh, Panthera invited us to Malaysia. That's me with Bo Ann, um, who's now a professor in Singapore, and Faye. We can see how happy we are beginning to patrol. Uh, we're getting to patrol in Malaysia. And then uh, hacking through the forest, see the poachers camp, and that's the end of the day, completely exhausted. <laughs> and the poachers are, and, and we're being told, you know, there's still a one kilometer walk that way. But what we learned from there is that there's a whole lot more complexity that we need to take into account. 
that uh, there's really a street map inside the forest uh, with uh, different kinds of uh, river beds and ridge lines that we need to take into account. And so this is what needs to be incorporated and Faye will talk a whole lot more about that. So pause is this now combination of game theory plus poacher behavior prediction plus this forest street map. And so initial trials based on this were conducted uh, with the help of Panthera in Malaysia uh, to see how well this whole system would work. These were preliminary trials uh, which showed that we were able to look at higher numbers of human activity size per kilometer but we really want to try these out in a much larger scale. And so there are different uh, collaborations in progress uh, with the WCS. It's in Uganda in the Queen Elizabeth National Park. We are about to generate particular patrol recommendations and with Panthera and World Wildlife Fund somewhere in India and Southeast Asia. So this is where we hope to move this forward. But there are many other opportunities to conduct uh, these um, use of AI-based decision aids to assist in patrolling and protection of forests, for example, is one such. This is work done in collaboration with the AVG, which is a non-governmental organization in Madagascar and with Michigan State University. And this is uh, generating patrols in forests, but there's a bigger problem here that is um, it's a simultaneous optimization of team building and patrolling. So you're trying with the fixed budget, you're trying to figure out what's the best team to hire and simultaneously, how do you use it? And so uh, this, is a, this is a challenge that we've been working on and hopefully we'll be able to, again, deliver something that AVG could use in figuring out the right team to hire. But the list goes on. Um, protection of fisheries is another challenge where you have data on illegal fishing and you're trying to figure out how to patrol. So this is work we've done with the U.S. Coast Guard. Protecting river pollution by doing randomized inspection. And uh, I don't know if Paul Sherry is in the audience here, but he will talk a lot more about uh, some of the randomized inspections that they are doing. But this was a work that was complementary to that. So I'll stop here and say that um, AI and game theory have a lot to say about protecting forests, fish, and wildlife worldwide. Uh, Boan will also talk about his work on trying to protect coral reefs. Um, but there's, there's just a large number of possibilities for research and applications. And I'm really delighted uh, that we are all here to think about this. And I hope you come to the C4 track of this conference as well, where many of these issues will be discussed. So thank you.